them for our uh, devotion and our uh, passage is uh, in uh, Mark 1 9 up to 15 and the title is experiencing God there is a book that uh, talks about experiencing God it's written in a book um, and then uh, another book about it and it is like a devotional book uh, that you can uh, read it uh, every day and it's very interesting because uh, it talks about how you can not just uh, learn about God but experience God in your life and so we ask this question this uh, uh, in this devotion have you experienced God in your life so we, we, we ask this question, how is God in my life? Is He real in my life, in my life experiences? Now, uh, based on our passage, we can ask this question again. Have you experienced the love of God the Father? Let's read uh, a portion of our passage. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee. And, what, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens torn open, and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. You can see here Jesus Christ, then the Holy Spirit like a dove, and then the voice from the Father, saying, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. And we are going to see the uh, other translation. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. We know that uh, God loves uh, the Son, Jesus Christ. And we have this uh, loving relationship among the persons of the Trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In this passage, very specific, God saying to Jesus Christ, You are my Son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Now, oh, you can see here that... Uh, it is during the baptism of Jesus Christ and the heaven was uh, torn open and God saying this is my son and most um, assuring here is the voice saying you are my beloved you are my son whom I love and we are going to see the progress of the story Jesus Christ came teaching and preaching and healing and doing a miracles and so on among uh, the people in Galilee on the way to Jerusalem and there on his way to Jerusalem and then in Jerusalem he was crucified and before he died the curtain was torn open right the torn torn you know the curtain at the temple is very thick, but it was torn from top to bottom. The word torn there is very similar to the, uh, uh, or the same word was used when Jesus Christ was baptized and the heaven was torn open. When, when uh, the heaven was torn open, the Father saying, you are my son. And then, uh, when the curtain was uh, torn, a centurion, a Roman officer, exclaimed, Surely this man, referring to Jesus Christ, was the Son of God. So we can see here the point of uh, Mark trying to show Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the beloved Son of God. And I like this translation. You are my son whom I love. So we can see here the experience of Jesus Christ from the Father being loved so dearly. Now, it is being revealed here 
the heart of God the Father, which is so loving. If you're going to look back to the Old Testament, He said to the people of Israel, I have loved you with an everlasting love. We can see here the heart of God for His people in the Old Testament. Then, in the New Testament, but God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God shows His love when Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. And then, in 1 John 3, 1, see what great love the Father has lavished on us. You see, lavished, extremely uh, given to us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. So we are the children of God whom He loves. So we can see in, the, in our passage, God loving His Son, Jesus Christ, but then we are adopted children of God. We are born again as children of God in the Spirit. And according to our passage or, or this, uh, this uh, verse, see what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And so we ask this question, have you experienced the love of God the Father in your life. We have a loving Father. We can see how He loved Jesus Christ. And according to our passage, you know, He lavished His love upon us that we can be called children of God. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God shows His love in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we can see here the love of God. And we're asking if I have experienced it, you have experienced it. Let's open our heart. Let's open our lives so that we can experience this great love of God through Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know in your experience, uh, sometimes our uh, hearts are closed because of the imperfect fathers we have. Uh, and, and sometimes we think of uh, God the Father just like our Father, earthly fathers. But it's, it's, it's different. Our earthly fathers, they're imperfect. They can only give what they have. And many times they also commit mistakes. And maybe others can experience, you know, being fatherless in their lives. Sometimes their fathers, you know, did wrong to them. And so in their subconscious, in their mind, that's, that's, that's a portrayal of father. Uh, they know, and so when they got, they think God the Father, maybe it's like that, but it's different. God the Father, our Father in heaven, is so perfect. You can experience His love through Jesus Christ. Perfect love. So we should not doubt the love of God. Another question. Have you experienced the leading of the Holy Spirit in your life? So experiencing God, yes, experiencing the love of God the Father, and experiencing the leading of the Holy Spirit, Spirit-led life, Spirit-filled and led life. Now, in our passage, the Spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness, where He was tempted by Satan for 40 days. He was out among the wild animals and angels to care of him. Now, we can see here that uh, uh, our passage is saying that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, compelled Jesus Christ. In uh, another translation, the Spirit drove him into the desert. Right? Drove him, compelled him. Right? Uh, why is it that uh, 
the Holy Spirit has to let, lead Jesus Christ into the wilderness. And it's very interesting that uh, where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. And we know the temptation about uh, you know, uh, Satan saying to uh, Jesus Christ in, in other Gospels, you know, uh, if you are the Son of God, then turn this uh, stone into bread. And then uh, again, he went to the uh, temple, he brought to the temple, and then uh, Satan said, all right, you can jump. You know, you can jump here. If you are, uh, and, and according to the word of God, angels of the Lord will protect you. Jesus Christ said, do not put God into the test. And then uh, Satan showed the kingdom of the world and saying, if you bow down to me, all this riches, you know, wealth in this world, I'm going to give you. Jesus Christ said, away from me, Satan. The point here is that in the temptation, Jesus became victorious. In contrast, when Adam and Eve were tempted, they failed. So the fall of uh, Adam and Eve, we can see here the victory of Jesus Christ. He is the one qualified to be uh, the Lord and Savior of the world. He is victorious. He was victorious. And he came here to uh, lead the way for the salvation of uh, many to restore, you know, you human beings who fail, who fall, just like uh, Adam and Eve. Uh, very interesting because uh, in another translation, temptation is uh, testing, you know. Uh, and uh, in the Greek, it's just one, you know, one word, temp, test. But uh, we have to understand the idea of tempting and then testing. Here's a very uh, interesting contrast. Testing seeks to reveal the person's moral qualities or character and move them in conformity with the nature of Christ in contrast to deceives and uh, persuades to evil so that it may corrupt and ruin. You know, seeks to undeceive, that's testing, seeks to deceive, that's a uh, temptation. And uh, testing aims at a person's good making him more aware of his need for God and of God's glory, glorious ability to supply all of his needs according to the God's riches in Christ Jesus. In contrast, to temptation aims at leading the person consciously or unconsciously into increasing the independence and separation from God and, he reveal, and his revealed will. Another one, uh, testing is the work of God and temptation the result of the world the flesh and the devil and in our passage you can see here the devil tempting so it is tempting in the perspective of uh, uh, God God allowed you know the Holy Spirit led Jesus Christ to test to test right it's a, it has a positive uh, uh, like a positive uh, let's say aspect temptation it has this negative aspect coming from the perspective of uh, Satan. So from the perspective of Satan, it is to uh, let us fall. From the perspective of God, it is to make us strong, strengthen us through trials. So, the Holy Spirit led Jesus Christ. And if we are going to see in uh, the life of Jesus Christ, He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was led by the Holy Spirit. Okay, His life was uh, being filled and led by the Holy Spirit. And uh, the, the command also of Paul to Christians is be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right, so we can see here, the Christian life should be led, filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, sometimes, just like in the experience of uh, uh, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit can lead us into trials, into testing. Uh, this, this trials, Satan can, can use to uh, deceive us, to make us down.
But in the perspective of God, it is to strengthen us. And for example, this pandemic that happened worldwide, you know, uh, in the perspective of God, this can be tested, part of the trials of these lights, to make us uh, strong, to, to make us uh, God conscious, uh, to help us see the reality of life. It, 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 it is here and then late and then no more. And uh, we have to prepare for heaven. Uh, in the perspective of uh, Satan, he can discourage us, you no? Know? He can uh, put us down through this uh, pandemic. He can give us anxiety and fear and so on. All right? So, uh, the challenge now is this. Stay strong. Your test will become your testimony. Your mess will become your message. That's according to Max uh, Lucado. So, uh, stay strong. Uh, uh, for us Christians, we believe in the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I hope and pray that we will experience this leading, that even in times of trials, He will lead us out and victorious. Now, the Lord's Prayer being taught by Jesus Christ, uh, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So we are asking God, you know, not to lead us into temptation. Because in the experience of Jesus Christ, we can see that Jesus Christ was led by the Holy Spirit into temptation, into testing, right? So it is possible that God can lead us. But then, we are praying that He will deliver us from the evil one. Now, uh, in, the, in the perspective of Paul, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. So the Holy Spirit cannot lead us into testing, into temptation, which we cannot bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. We can bear it. So, well, once tempted, God is also there by His Holy Spirit to lead us out, to be victorious. Just like in the case of Jesus Christ, the angels attended Him. Hallelujah. In this life, as Christians, we are being led by the Holy Spirit. But at the same time, there is Satan, there is evil in this world. But we know that just as Jesus Christ was victorious, the Holy Spirit will lead us also to be victorious. Have you experienced the leading of the Holy Spirit? The victory of the Holy Spirit in your life? Even amidst trials, just like what we are facing, I pray we will come out victorious by the victory, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. This is the last point. Have you experienced the mission of Jesus Christ? God the Father, have you experienced His love? God the Holy Spirit, have you experienced His leading? God the Son, Jesus Christ. Now, in the Philippines, 91 uh, days to go and it's Christmas time hallelujah so in our house we uh, we put uh, some decorations Christmas lights and uh, already in the Philippines the the uh, spirit of Christmas is there starting September because it was a bear month so bear month of September October November and then December and we are counting every day you know 91 days to go 90 days to go and then it's Christmas this is to remember the birth of Jesus Christ. When God sent Jesus Christ, He did not uh, come as an adult. He came as a baby. He started as a baby. And we celebrate that uh, uh, moment. God, in the person of Jesus Christ, becoming human, becoming a baby. Now, in our passage, after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news. So we can see here why Jesus Christ came, proclaiming the good news of God. 
The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. So we are talking about the good news of the kingdom of God, the rule of God. And in this uh, passage, <coughs> uh, uh, let's say in this uh, version, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Is at hand. It's here, you know, it's just there, you know, you can, you can reach it now. Right? And so, repent and believe the gospel. You know, well, in, in uh, Mark 1, 1, the beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Then Jesus Christ came proclaiming the, the, the uh, good news, the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. What is the gospel? It's about Jesus Christ, his life, death, and resurrection. See, it talks about the life of Jesus Christ. More particularly, the message that He came for your salvation and my salvation. He became human being, a human being, to die on the cross. To atone for your sin and my sin. Nobody can do that. Nobody can solve the solution of sin. In this world, only Jesus Christ came. This is in contrast to the gospel or the good news of the Roman emperor at the time. You know, there's a Roman emperor and they say the, the good news is about the birth of, uh, you know, the, 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 the baby, the son of uh, the emperor. They said it's the good news or the triumph of the Generals, you know, when they go to war and they're victorious, that's the good news. A mighty saying, this is the true good news. This is a true gospel. The birth, the life of Jesus Christ and his victory. And if we are going to read the book of Mark, then we can see how Mark presented the life of Jesus Christ from Galilee on the way to Jerusalem. And there he suffered. He was crucified. He died. But then after three days, He resurrected. So this is the good news. Jesus Christ died, but resurrected after three days. For your victory, for my victory. For your salvation, for my salvation. And so the challenge here is this. Repent and believe the good news. Repentance is turning away from his sins and not doing anymore. You turn away from wickedness and turn to God in faith. Repentance and faith, you know, they are, they are just like a two faces of a coin, you know. There's repentance and faith at the same time. You turn to God. You turn away from your wickedness, from your sin, and you turn to God in faith. You believe. The good news. So we can see here repentance and faith together. You believe in Jesus Christ. You believe in what He did. You turn away from your wickedness and believe in Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ came to atone for your sin and my sin. Hallelujah. In this uh, uh, daily bread, I uh, read about this uh, false place of safety about uh, a man whose uh, false safety is in drinking. He got always drunk. Even though he did not fly, but uh, he was addicted to uh, drinking. And so he was always drunk. That's his place of safety. He thought if he is drunk, he's okay. But he smelled bad and then he's wobbly in his walking, you know. Uh, others, you know, their false safety is uh, in drugs. Others, their false safety is in their career, in their achievements, in their goals, uh, in what they have, in their power, in their, you know, uh, those are false uh, safety. But uh, in the passage, you know, we're invited to find our true, true 
place of safety in the person of Jesus Christ. Believe Him. Look unto Him. He is the true place, the true person of safety. Even in our time, in this crisis that we are facing, you know, Duterte is not the uh, place of safety. Biden is not the place of uh, safety, you know, election in the Philippines and we're trying to look onto these uh, people who will be, you know, uh, yeah, of course God can use our leaders, you know, and we need to pray for uh, the person to lead this country in the next election and other uh, leaders. But then uh, the true place of safety really is Jesus Christ. Have you experienced Jesus in your life? Now, Paul is uh, one of those who persecuted uh, the Christians and he was a very wicked and evil, you know. But then, God transformed him. He's an example of one who experienced the love of God. The leading of the Holy Spirit, the atonement, the mission of Jesus Christ in his life. And after knowing Jesus Christ and repenting of uh, his sin and believing in Jesus Christ, he said, I am glad when I suffer for you in my body. For I am participating in the sufferings of Christ <clears throat> that continue for his body, the church. Paul moved on, suffering for Christ by doing his mission preaching and teaching here and there and he suffered a lot for the sake of Jesus Christ and this is a challenge for us if we know Jesus Christ we are challenged to also share Jesus Christ that others also may come to know the love of God experience the love of God experience the leading of the Holy Spirit experiencing salvation in Christ Jesus let us pray Lord thank you for your message this day for us we commit everyone into your loving care, into your leading. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I bless you.